Welcome to Cannes Film Festival. This is a special year for the whole festival because it's celebrating their 70th anniversary. So very happy to be here. My name is Marcus and I will be with you this week. Today is Wednesday and we will cover the festival for the whole week. And uh, of course, uh, we're going to do cover as much as possible. Uh, we're going to see the movies. We're going to go to a press conference. We're going to do some interviews. And of course, we're going to be on the red carpet and uh, film all the stars. And of course, attending to all the events and parties that Ken has to offer. Today is a great day here in Cannes. It's nice weather. And right next to me here, we have the main entrance. And this year, the security level is very high. Uh, and right next to me here, this is where uh, uh, we're queuing up when we're going inside the red carpet. Both the people that is going to watch the movies on the premiere, and also the people that is working here, photographers and so on, is standing up here, is lining up here. Welcome to the Film Palace. Now we're inside the building and we want to show you around here. In this building we find the market where they buy and sell movies. And next to us we have the red carpet and the cinema, mostly while the competition movies uh, are taking place. And uh, we also want to show you the press conference room, which is on the third floor. So we're going to start by that. So come with us here. You hear me okay? So uh, now we're inside the press conference room and um, this is actually where all the press conferences uh, holding for all the big movies. Uh, we have been on a press conference here with uh, actors like uh, Ben Stiller, Dustin Hoffman, Adam Sandler and yesterday was Nicole Kidman uh, and so on. Uh, so this is where they're sitting and this is where the interviews are taking place. In the back here, um, you don't have to videotape it, but we can show them later. In the back, all the media standing, all the cameramen, and uh, they have to be here one hour before to set it up. And uh, then you always have a conferencier on the uh, right hand side that is leading the press conference. So you have to be nice to that person so you can get to ask some questions to the actors. So uh, that's how it works. Now we are on the elevator down, where we can get some coffee. Uh, while we're screen here, take a coffee before the press conference starts. So uh, come with us here. Please, gentlemen. Hi, my name is Marcus. I work for Swedish Television. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for a great movie today. And my question goes to uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, what went through your mind the first time you were reading the script? Um, well, I had first initially, I had initially seen the image of Okja. Um, I've known Bong for a while now, and he said, I'm conjuring up this movie uh, with Tilda, and this is an image of this, this creature. And I just said, do you have a part in it for me? So <laughs> I hadn't read the script <laughs> initially, and then I just wanted to work with him. And then when I did read the screenplay, um, I was very moved, you know, just as I am when I see the film. I was laughing and at the same time ultimately just deeply moved by a story of um, particularly a young girl's journey from childhood to adolescence, you know, in a very unconventional way that I feel like that journey is in reality. So um, that was my first impression. Behind me we have the Film Palace here in Cannes. And tonight we're very excited, it's Okja that has its premiere. 
and the director of the movie is Bong Yon Ho. And then we have uh, actors like uh, Jake uh, Gyllenhaal and also Paul Dano and so on. The people start arriving now to the red carpet. Now are the actors and uh, the director of the movie Okja arriving on the red carpet. And here you can see Bong Yon Ho, the director and the actors, Jake Gyllenhaal, Steven Yoon, Paul Dano, Tilda Swinton and so on. The movie starts in about half an hour and uh, we're also gonna get inside and see the movie so we are very excited. Now we're inside the press conference and today it's a great day because we recently had a press conference with the movie The Mayor Ravi Stories. And there were some big names in this movie. Uh, among the actors you can find the great comedians ben, S ben Stiller, Adam Sandler and of course the legend Dustin Hoffman. So I can say that the atmosphere was very good here and all the actors was in very good mood to talk. So it, w it was a great press conference today. So now I want you to see um, a little bit of the press conference. This is Emma. Hi, everybody. Hi. Bonjour. Today, as Danny Mayerwitz, <laughs> he reunites with Dustin Hoffman, his co-star in The Cobbler, yeah. and Ben Stiller, her first time since Happy Gilmore. Whoa. Adam Sandler, welcome back to Cannes. Thank you, great to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everybody. Next. I just think, I just yeah. think it's cool to hear Happy Gilmore mentioned at Cannes. <laughs> I like See that. my guest. It belongs, baby. Yes. <laughs> well, next to me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Emmy Award winner, Ben Stiller. Wow. Yes. yes. Next to him, a man who needs no introduction, really. From era-defining movies to acclaimed stage roles, we have all grown up with his unmistakable presence and voice. Mm -hmm. Two-time Academy winner, Dustin Hoffman. Yes. Yes? Did they see the yes, movie? over here. <clears throat> oh, they saw them. My name is Marcus, and um, I'm from Sweden. Uh, first of all, so what I just want to say welcome to Cannes. It's uh, really great to have you here. Thank you. Uh, my first question goes to Adam Sandler. Uh, can you tell us what have been the best parts with uh, working with this movie? Yeah. And the second question goes to the, uh, Ben Stiller. How did you prepare your uh, role for this movie? And the last question is to Dustin Hoffman, the legend. Uh, yeah. How um, has it been to working with Adam Sandler and Ben Stiller on this project? <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's going to start? Well, Ben. Nice. Uh, um, I forgot my part. What, what, what was it like to work with the legend Ben Stiller? On the uh, <laughs> 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 that a boy. That a boy. It was. It was great. It was great. Listen, we, we had a, an amazing time making the movie. We all worked very hard together and we got to know each other. You know, we, we, we know, I know Ben for since we're 22 or something. That's a long time. And Dustin, I know forever too. He was nice to me when I was a young, uh, when I did Billy Madison, his, his son liked uh, Billy Madison and uh, I got invited to go to Dustin's house and say hi to his family and hang out with Dustin. He treated me uh, like a, 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 a very, we were close immediately. Dustin came to my wedding. Dustin's just been in my life a long time and um, we had an amazing time getting to know Emma. I, I, I love being with her, get, love laughing with her. She's a, a wonderful lady and I'm glad that I get to tell my kids that I'm friends with uh, Nanny McVie, and that helps. And uh, and uh, with Noah, we we just we're tight now. I just I just love him as a person. I love him as a. Uh, I love talking to him. I love laughing with him, and that's it. It's been an amazing process. Well, you Ben, <clears throat> the legend. Um, you know, I I, ha I have to say, uh, you know, just like all joking aside, it's 
for me, it's never, I never take it lightly to be, to be ever, you know, in the presence of Dustin because I, first of all, I just appreciate him so much as an actor. And for me growing up, he was such an important actor uh, in terms of what I wanted to do, watching him, being inspired by him. Uh, and then getting a chance to know him over the years in working on, um, you know, the Fokker movies, we worked in a certain context, which was really amazing uh, to have that chance. And then to, I never thought I'd actually get a chance to work with him on a different kind of movie. And um, every time I'm with him, I, see, I, I really, I just appreciate it so much uh, because he's an incredibly kind and generous person. He's very funny, and he's very self-effacing, but, you know, there's no denying his body of work. It is depressing to talk oh, yeah. with him sometimes at dinner because every story he'll tell us about some other classic movie he's yeah. made. Mm -hmm. It's like ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. You can't even pull out one that's like, I don't even know there's one that's, well, there are probably a couple, but it's not like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just daunting, his body of work. Yeah. And then you, and what, what makes me think of as an actor is the choices because you, know, you make these choices in, as an actor and he's made these incredible choices from the beginning. So I never, uh, I'm never not appreciative of that. And working with Adam for me, uh, yeah, Adam and I have known each other for years and years. Uh, this was a really special experience having a chance to connect with him like this. I think at where we're both at in our lives, personally, um, it, it was a chance for us to really uh, get closer than we've ever been before, I feel. Absolutely. And yeah. playing brothers, uh, it, it, it was I, I really, for me, it was like one of the best experiences I've had. Me too, buddy. Yes. Dustin, what about you? I resent uh, people <laughs> saying that they grew up with my... <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone who's older than me, can you please stand up? Uh, uh, <laughs> Actually, when I read the script, I passed on it. I didn't want to do it because... Which put I, me in very good company. Yes, I, yes yeah, that's I, true. I, <laughs> he passed on Ingmar Bergman twice. Yes. I, I, I didn't want to play an old man. I thought I was perfect for either of their parts. And uh, <laughs> I, my son, uh, Jake, talked me into doing this. That's right. You're laughing, Ben. What about your reaction? Obviously, um, you don't know it very well. Oh, I, to the to the script, yeah. or yeah, I was really. I mean, I was just happy that you know to to be that Noah wanted to work together again uh, after a couple of times. Um, <laughs> I was very fortunate to get the call. Um, yeah, I thought the script was beautiful. I was I was reading the script. I thought the first like thirty or forty pages were kind of slow. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> Uh, right? I don't, yeah, my character shows up on 41, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I was, and then when he told me that Dustin Hoffman was auditioning to play the dad, I was so excited. <laughs> and we read together and there was some chemistry and, uh -huh. you know, I was really, I mean, I, I, it, I think it's a beautiful script and Noah's writing is uh, incredibly uh, precise and unique and, um, you know, what, and his filmmaking style is, uh, is very uh, singular, and I, 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 you know, from the process through the editing to what you know what he puts out there. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I am I, I'm always happy to be a part of anything that he's creating. What about you, Dustin Hoffman? I mean, being Harold and reading the script, how did it feel to you? Well, like everyone else, uh, I, all of us would work for Noah for nothing. In fact, it worked for him. In fact, it cost me money. Sorry to <laughs> That's what's called independent meat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, he's, he's quite expert. He really is the best. And uh, we do say his dialogue word for word, whether we like it or not. <laughs> and uh, I think not since The Graduate was I required to say every single word, and uh, it pays off because there is a music to his writing. Uh, I agree with Ben. He is a singular artist. Uh, I don't know if I want to work with him again, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, there's, you, you can't overstate uh, his talent. That's, that fight scene was rougher than I wanted it to be. Ben... Uh, it's a more solid has a more solid body than I was expecting. He wasn't very easy. He wasn't easy to move, and he came. Uh, he low came at me. Of gravity. Yeah. There's some. Yeah. We there wasn't any. It's a very low budget movie, so there yeah. wasn't any. There was a stunt coordinator, kind of. Was there? But there was no rehearsal at all. 
He kept was, saying whatever a lot. Yeah, hey, whatever. Yeah, whatever. You guys will get out there and you'll, you know, and you'll just let it happen. And, and Noah does like to do a number of takes. Um, uh. I'm saying that. I mean, there's a lot of takes. Yeah. And uh, we, you, uh, we ended up... He hurt feeling me. It. Yeah, he well, hurt I, me more. Yeah. I mean, I got it too. I wasn't actually physically bruised, but you had something on your I arm. Had a, giant. I had one of the biggest yeah. bruises I've ever had in my life on my arm, and that was on by like take 34. <laughs> I was saying to Ben, hey, uh, just so you know, right here, <laughs> it hurts me a lot. If you could start the fight off in, in the middle of the chest area, that would help me. And then uh, Noah would call action, and then bam, I'd be like, he, I, I, I don't think he heard me. He <laughs> went straight to the bruise again. <laughs> Tonight is the premiere of the Mayor Robert stories. And uh, right behind me, we have the red carpet. We're here in the Fiend Palace. And in the movie, there are some uh, quite a big names as Adam Sandler, Ben Stiller, and uh, Dustin Hoffman. And we actually met them earlier today on the press conference. And uh, Adam Sandler was mentioning that uh, him and Ben Stiller has actually known each other since they were 22 years old. And uh, after doing this movie, Ben Stiller said that now they're even better bodies than before. And uh, Ben Stiller also mentioned that uh, during the time when he was growing up, uh, Dustin Hoffman was actually the one he was looking up to when he wanted to become an actor. And now you're going to see some more pictures from the red carpet. Welcome to the press conference room. Uh, earlier this morning, uh, the movie The Killing of a Sacred Deer had its first screening. And uh, later this night, uh, or this evening, the movie will have its premiere. But first now, it's going to be a short press conference. And we are very excited because we will find names like Nicole Kidman and Colin Farrell. But unfortunately, Colin Farrell is not going to attend the press conference but hopefully we will speak to Nicole Kidman. So now I want to show you a little bit of the press conference. You are taller every year. You know, you're taller every year. Yeah. How are you? Good. Mesdames, Messieurs, bonjour. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Center of the table, director Yorgos Lantimos. The reason I did this presentation sort of up down, upside down is that this is very much a family 
movie, or a movie about a family. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And therefore, I will introduce the family. Uh, dad is absent, Colin Farrell, Stephen Murphy. But mom is here as Anna Murphy, uh, Nicole Kidman. And Nicole, you're appearing in four projects here in Cannes. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the stage you've reached in your career and what you think your massive presence in Cannes says about that. Yeah, I mean, that's... Yogos is, would always say, Nicole, you've got to understand the tone, it's a comedy. And I would be like, uh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think um, for uh, Raf and, and Sonny, they, they felt very protected, if I'm speaking for you. I mean, they were up for anything and they were really um, engaged and, and uh, excited um, and we rehearsed and we had time together and we spent time hanging out in um, the house and then obviously we shot in a real hospital for a good couple of weeks. Um, and then to have four, four projects here, I mean, that's sort of a confluence of events. It's not something that I um, was aware would happen, but at this stage of my life, I'm just trying to stay very bold and open and try things and support um, filmmakers that I believe in um, and also people like Jane Campion who's been my friend since I was 14 discovered me basically so um, it's you know I'm, I'm at that place in my life where I still try to act as though I'm I'm 21 and starting my career if that makes sense <laughs> um, I didn't see correlation. I just, I mean, I just <clears throat> read the script and was hypnotised. And I feel like the the film has a hypnotic quality to it. And um, and a lot of it was um, abandoning any um, analysis and just, um, as Yogo says, forget all the preparation. Just come in and be. Um, he has a very particular way of um, creating a set and the vision for it. And I think the job of the actor, particularly in his his style of filmmaking, is to come and help um, help that come to fruition, and not distract. A lot of times, Yogos's direction is please do nothing, um, which is a really interesting thing. It's a very very difficult thing to do as an actor, and that for me, when I watched the film, I was, I called him afterwards and I said, I've not seen anything like it because, um, and I felt hypnotized by it. So I, I actually, my children don't really see my films. Part, I mean, our family is very separate to um, my creative life. And, um, and I try to, um, you know, occasionally I'll do something for them that they can come on set. I did Paddington where they were able to come and, you know, be a part of it. But they're, they, they have very little understanding of what my husband or I do. They're kind of, their lives are obviously far more important. <laughs> and um, so I can't remember, I mean, I know that they saw Paddington and my, um, actually my, my child at the time was appalled because I was playing the villain. Um, and so I try to keep it quite separate for now. Uh, and that's how I'm able to be um, a mother. And, you know, a lot of it is when you're an actress trying to juggle motherhood with the work that you want to do. Um, and I'm fortunate in the sense that I'm married to a musician, so our schedules are able to be juggled and we're able to go and follow, pursue our sort of artistic, creative life as well as then have a very solid um, home life and that's I keep it simple in that in that regard um, the first film I watched with my family I, I was taken to the theater as a child I was actually not raised on cinema um, that came more in my teenage years um, I re and I've said this before but I remember going wag what we call in Australia wagging school where you don't go to school um, when you're meant to be at school and I went and saw Clockwork Orange and I caught a train and sat in a dark theatre with about three other people in an art cinema in Australia on a huge screen and watched that film and went, 
wow. And, uh, and then I sort of just started to eat things up and drink things up. And I'm a huge fan of cinema, you know, and being in a dark room watching a film and being transported. And I love that. And I will always love that. And I'm committed to it. And this film was obviously shot on film, which Yorgos can talk about, which you fought hard yeah, for. boring. Okay, that's boring. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I still... I still have that passion at, at this age. I still have a passion for acting and for cinema and for storytelling and for pushing boundaries and moving out of my, my comfort zone, at least, to, um, to try things with an abandonment. Now we're at the Film Palace, and tonight is a premiere, and the move is The Killing of a Sacred Deer. And among the actors, we'll find Nicole Kidman and Colin Farrell. So now we're very excited, and now we want to show you some pictures from the red carpet. Et nous accueillons donc maintenant l'équipe de The Killing of the Sacred Deer, mise à mort du cerf sacré, réalisé par Yorgos Antimos, le réalisateur de The Lobster, présenté à Cannes en 2015. Il est donc de retour dans la compétition. de ces comédiens Nicole Kidman, Colin Farrell, Barry Keoghan, Rafa Cassini, Sonny Solji.
l'équipe de mise à mort du Cerf Sacré. En haut des marches du palais. Now we're inside a press conference room, and today the movie The Beguild had its first showing for the press. And uh, the press conference was uh, recently taken place here, and uh, among the actors in, in this movie, we find Nicole Kidman, Kirsten Dunst, and Colin Farrell, and so on. And the director uh, was Sofia Coppola. And for this press conference, uh, there was a lot of questions to Sofia Coppola, where she had to answer questions about the movie and uh, answer questions about it from a female perspective. So, um, and of course, we was also asking a question, and that was going to Colin Farrell. So uh, now I want you to see a little bit of the press conference. My name is Marcus, and I work for Swedish Television. Uh, first, I want to say it's uh, nice to have you here, and uh, extra welcome to Colin Farrell because we were missing you yesterday on uh, your press conference on your other movie. Thanks, man. So uh, now we're happy that you're here. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask um, I want to ask one question, and um, I want Colin Farrell and Nicole Kidman and Kirsten Dunst to answer it. Uh, how has it been to be working together, and what have you been going through uh, during this journey together? It's been a journey, man. <laughs> <laughs> to get here, <laughs> many miles of road, um, many corsets, it was many, many corsets, many corsets, and, which I didn't have to worry about being the token male. <laughs> I don't know if I said token female, then the debate would be open. <laughs> um, it was it was an amazing experience to shoot this film. It really was. I mean, I I grew up in my life with three very strong and very brilliant and kind. Um, and smart women in my life, my mother and my two sisters. So for me to be surrounded by all of these incredible women who are amazingly talented and, and decent and smart and creative and insightful and curious was just a treat for me. I was really spoiled. And Sophia sets a very particular mood um, in the working environment that was one of uh, comfort and ease and trust and, and an environment that allows you as an actor to play and allows you to explore. Um, so I had, it, it was really, a, I mean, it was a really, I, I've been doing this 20 years and, and I've said a couple of times, I think it was my favorite experience, my favorite shoot. And you never know what that's going to result in. You never know what the film, that doesn't mean the film's going to be good or bad or anything. It has very little bearing sometimes. Um, but it was an amazing creative experience and I, I was, I got to sit back and, and, and watch these women do incredible work and, and to be directed by Sophia, who's only one of two female directors I've worked with, Sophia and, and Liv Ullman. Um, unless I'm thinking of forgetting someone and if I am, I should be shot. Um, <laughs> but it was amazing to have Sophia, you know, because this is, it is told from a female perspective <laughs> and what happened? It is told, no, no, tell me later. It is, told, <laughs> it is told from a female perspective and so I think it was very important to have Sophie is a very elegant human being. She's obviously incredibly smart, but she's incredibly e elegant and she has a gentility to her, which is not to say that she hasn't got a beast of an engine inside and an incredible, an incredible creative engine, you know, but, but it was nice to have that elegance and that at times tenderness um, pervade the whole experience and, and aesthetically also inform how the film looked. And then my guy comes in and he's just a bit, little bit of a survivalist and, um, someone who the idea of good manners is maybe not speaking with your mouth full while you're eating and that's about the extent of it. Um, but we had a great time. I had a great time with Kirsten and a, an amazing time with Nicole. It was the second time I worked with Nicole in a very short period of time. So we liked each other the first time out, thank God. So the second time was a joy. <laughs> Hi, sorry, hello. It's Jack Mulvin from The Times. Um, this question was kind of addressed earlier and Sophia, you answered it briefly, but I'd like it if um, Kirsten, Nicole and Colin could also answer it. There's, what does this film tell us about all female environments, that dynamic, and does it suggest there's something unhealthy about it? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I'll let my yeah. friends take that one. <laughs> I, mean, I think any time there's a, a group of, of women all together, they're cut off from the world. I mean, I've always heard about boarding school and there's di different dynamics that come out, so we tried to approach it in a, in a way that we could connect 
to you and it had truth to us. Yeah, that, Kirsten? Now that, yeah, it, it, I think that, you know, you're dealing with this pent up, you know, all these people pent up together, no matter male or female or mi a mixture, mm. there'll always be something that comes out of that. It's like a survivalist technique. And, and so he, Colin just happens to be what our aggressions and all of our feelings that have been corseted up, let's say, <laughs> um, they kind of all get unleashed because this new dynamic comes in. I don't think it's necessarily yeah. Yeah. It's male or female. I think he comes in and ruins everything. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had a girlfriend once that used to call me the ruiner. <laughs> I thought we were doing Literally. just fine. But it was quite affectionate. It was, it was quite. A, right. I think it was affectionate. <laughs> we, were, we were fine. <laughs> but they were um, fine the living only in thing a. We couldn't do was procreate, but who cares? We were fine. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good riddance to him. Yeah. <laughs> now that's going to be a really great quote. That's going to go out there. <laughs> Question over there. Hi, uh, Anthony D'Alessandro from Deadline. Question for Sophia. Um, at CinemaCon, you said something. Uh, you said, I hope people see this movie where it deserves to be seen, in the theater. And that resonates hugely and strongly, uh, particularly at this festival with Netflix. And or Netflix, Netflix, yeah, the theater or Netflix, um, either way. I, I was wondering if you could expound on that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, I would love to. <laughs> um, I'm so happy that we shot on 35 millimeter film and Philippe Lassard's beautiful work and all of our, all of the work. I feel like it, it's um, so great to see on a big screen. So I, I really hope that people will go to the theaters. I think it, it's you know such an atmosphere that I hope you're really, um, you know, really go into in a, in a theater atmosphere and, and to see the photography. And we shot it thinking of a, a big frame, not a phone so I, I hope I hope people will see it in the theater and, and that that experience is such a, a unique one especially in, in our modern lives to, to really lose yourself in a film and it's so exciting to be in Cannes and celebrating that and to see films and in, in, on the big screen here in the Palais. Did you ever see David Lynch talking about seeing a film on the cell phone? Did you ever no. see that? No. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Did anyone ever see David Lynch talking about just check it out on YouTube. It's so beautiful. It's like a 45 second poem because he's very serious and he talks about people seeing, you know, and then he goes, and you think you're seeing the real movie on a fucking telephone <laughs> at the very end. It's beautiful. Get real. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Check it out. We'll, ha we'll have a look yeah. after. Okay. Watch it okay. together. Yes, yes. <laughs> And specifically, Sophia, uh, when Kathleen Kennedy was reaching out to some filmmakers to work on a certain sci-fi franchise, your name was actually banded as one of the people that she might have reached out to. I'm wondering if, if a studio had, had reached out to you and say, hey, you can do a Marvel movie, a Disney movie for $200 million. Is it something you would want to do? Or are you more interested in your art being more specific, more personal? How many words, tears was that subsume, question? Subsume your, 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 your vision uh, to a greater whole. Um, I love making uh, small, <laughs> low-budget films where I'm really allowed to, to do it the way I want. And I think when you have those huge franchises, there's a lot of um, cooks in the kitchen and meetings and conference rooms, which, um, uh, but I'll never say never, but I really enjoyed <laughs> making this film because it was a, a small film where it was really, fo the focus was on the acting. We were all in one location and, and, um, and I really enjoyed this. What was the first part of the question? <laughs> No. Today is our last day in Cannes, which is sad, but we're happy so far because we have got a great week here in Cannes. So I just shortly just want to summarize it. We've, for example, seen a lot of great movies. We've seen uh, Okja, we've seen The Killing of a Sacred Deer, and so on. And we've also been covering a lot of press conferences where we met actors and did some interviews. We met actors like uh, Adam Sandler, Ben Stiller, Dustin Hoffman. And today, we, today, earlier today, we met um, uh, Nicole Kidman and uh, Colin Farrell and Kirsten Dunst. And um, also, except from all that, we covered re the red carpet. We went to a lot of premieres. And, uh, and there were actually one person that we would like to have met that we didn't uh, uh, see this year. Uh, Clint Eastwood was here. So, uh, as I say, you can't win them all or you can't get them all. But, uh, so I just want to say thank you for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs>